Hi young artists, in this video we're going to be looking at making a paper mache bowl. And for that you're going to need something round that you can cover with paper mache. That could be a balloon, it could also be a regular bowl that you already have. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do with either, um, with whatever round surface you have is I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap. If you don't have plastic wrap, that's okay. Take a grocery bag and it'll do the same thing. Um, just some, but what I would do is I would cover it two times. So use two bags or two pieces of plastic wrap just because that's going to decrease the chances that you have a hole in that piece of plastic and then it ends up seeping through and messing stuff up. So cover it with two, pla two pieces of plastic. After that, you're going to need your paper, your small pieces of paper with those. You want those torn pieces of paper to be no bigger than the palm of your hand, so no bigger than that. But it can be any type of paper. Newspaper, it could be like um, gift wrap paper. One of the things I do usually suggest for students is to avoid shiny paper, but the main reason to avoid shiny paper, that would be like magazine paper. Um, but to avoid shiny paper because you can't paint it, but many of us don't have paint at home. But if you do and you want to paint it, don't use shiny paper. But then what I'm going to do is I have a bowl where I've mixed my flour, water, and salt mixture. Um, and if you haven't watched, I have a separate video on making that. But what I'm going to do is dip it all the way in, and I'm going to use a few fingers and wipe it off because I want it wet but not drippy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to slowly cover my plastic covered bowl with my pieces of newspaper. Now one thing that's important anytime you're doing paper mache is you want to do you want to make sure your pieces overlap. So not just that they're close to each other but you want those pieces to be on top of each other. And the reason for that is one you don't want any holes in your sculpture or your bowl in this case but the other reason is that everywhere that you overlap you actually make your sculpture stronger because in this spot where I have two pieces where I have them overlapping I get two pieces instead of just one so the more it overlaps the stronger your sculpture is going to actually be so overlapping is good I'm also trying to smooth out my pieces so I don't want pieces sticking up. But I'm trying to cover my entire bowl with this. One thing that I am going to do because usually there is an exception to just about every rule with things and that is that towards that bottom because it's not going to take you very long to get to the bottom but as I get to the bottom I'm going to get an extra piece of paper and try to make some long strips and here's the point of my long strips I want to have a neat edge to my bowl I don't want it to be jagged so I'm going to take a long piece and if you can fold it in half and it probably would have actually been easier for me to fold it in half before I stuck that in there so I'm gonna do that this second time so I'm gonna fold it in half and the purpose of folding that in half is to give me a nice neat rim for my bowl and I might need one small extra piece over there where those are overlapping where those need to overlap. I'm going to try to go all the way around and then 
see how these pieces are kind of sticking up I'm going to cover those up to make them lay down flat but this is going to make my bowl now what could I use this for you could use it for you can't use it for eating don't try to eat out of it it's not for eating it's more of a decorative bowl so a bowl that you could put things in so you could store things in it you could put change in it you could put some toys in it you could use it for lots of different things just not eating now how could you decorate it? Now there's a good question. You could decorate it a few ways. One way is that I could find some colorful paper, like some tissue paper, like you would put in a gift bag. Um, if you have paint, you could use paint. But colorful paper is a fun way to do it. And you could continue using our paper mache glue with that or if you want it to have more of a shiny surface on it then you can use glue that's mixed with um, a little bit of water like regular school glue mixed with a little bit of water and that will give it sort of a shiny surface but you can also use the same flour water and salt mixture but covering it one time will give it a, a pretty good shape but the more times you cover it, the stronger that bowl is going to be. But I hope that is helpful. Happy making and enjoy your paper mache bowl.